right, guys, welcome to the Backwoodsman's Institute. I'm Logan Fromey. Today I'm going to be talking about crow hunting. And we did a, a video a while back, which I haven't posted. I'm going to tie it into this one of me and a buddy going actually crow hunting. And first thing I want to talk about is the reason that people crow hunt, all right? Crows are a nuisance animal and they can hurt crops, trees, and all this stuff. And uh, there's really no natural predator to them, all right? So if no one hunts them and controls the population, then they're going to be overpopulated and cause more disease, tear up more crops and all that stuff. So that's why they have a uh, hunting season on crow. And that's why people like myself go out there and manage the po population. It's about wildlife conservation. I wouldn't eat a crow. They're scavengers. They, you know, they eat all the dead stuff that's on, on the ground, all the stuff they can get their hands onto, or their beaks onto, I should say. But the reason that we hunt them is to manage the population. All right, now I'm going to talk about how I set up. All right, this is a Feather Flex decoy. You can crush it up, fold it up, however you want to. Open it back up, it sucks air in, and it gives it that full look. It's got a closed pin on the back side. You can hook it on a tree limb or on the ground. I usually take about five to six crow decoys with me when I go. Um, I shoot crows with a shotgun. And use them as wing shooting, uh, practicing for wing shooting, bird season, duck season, dove season, all that stuff. This is a good way to hone your hunting skills, to work on calling, and to shooting wing, winged birds. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the decoy setup. All right, I like to use, like I said, five to six crow decoys. And how I do it, there's always one crow that is the lookout. All right, and I put him on the highest branch that I can and at the highest branch I can reach. Put him up there and I have him looking out, sitting up just basically like this, all right? Then I put the rest of them on the ground. I put two of them close, squaring off, kind of like this, because I like to use a fighting crow call. So I put two of them squaring off, and I put the other one scattered around, not kind of paying attention to him, but not really paying attention to him, all right? And that seems to work the best for me. All right, this is kind of how it'll look on the ground. I got four crows on the ground, two of them are squared off, and I got my lookout up in this tree over here. Alright, that's about as high as I can reach. And crows always do that. There's always one to look around, it's just like goose hunting. There's always sentries looking around and watching for predators or any other signs that they should fly. Get the, get the heck out of Dodge, basically. One thing I found out during my years of crow hunting. I have I use mouth calls sometimes, but I can never really get a bunch of crows to come into them. They're usually just one or two and stuff like that. You know, you might get a couple of them to fly in. And what I found out is you're pulling in those stragglers, or you're going to try to pull in a whole gang of crows coming in. All right, and then what you got to do to get them to come in is sound like a whole bunch of crows on the ground or in that area. So you can have a bunch of people hunting out with you and use mouth mouth calls, but I like to use electronic call. And I got a Preymaster uh, digital digital caller, and I'm going to show you that right now. This it's got a speaker, the remote, uh, the antenna for the remote, and it's got microchips you can put in here, and you can pop the speaker off. It came with three predator calls, and there's four there's four calls on each. Um, microchip basically so it came with three of them I bought two more just for crow hunting all right and it's summertime it's pretty hot out here I'm starting to sweat I had to change the shirt <laughs> so I wouldn't look so sweaty but now it's coming out all right now that I got my crow decoy set up behind me I'm gonna hide the speaker all right and I can hide it I got a bean field over here I got the edge of the woods right here so I'm gonna put it at the edge of the woods hide it, put some leaves over the speaker so it's not visible, and then I'm going to find my spot where I'm going to sit down or stand there or sit down, whatever I want to do, be concealed, and wait for some crows to come in. All right, I got my collar set up right in them weeds, right in there. Can't really see it. Camouflage is pretty good. Decoys are right out front. Now, where I would probably go is I got this tree uprooted right here. Now, there's an open spot right in here where I can get behind it, and it's got overhead cover from those trees right here, but I can still shoot the crows that are flying through the sky 
coming through this field over here. And that's where I'm going to try to be targeting to come into. Now that I got my decoy set up, my call in place, and I'm in place, theoretically, I'm going to choose what I want to use to call in these crows. All right. And with this Preymaster, there's two crow uh, microchips that I bought. I like starting out with excited crows, right? That's going to make them think there's a whole bunch of crows in this area, and they want to come over here to investigate what they're excited about. And it sounds something like this. Crows like loud, all right? They love loud. They love hearing that. If it's loud, they're, better, they're more likely to come in. All right, and what's good with this Prey Master, I can play two calls at once. And the next thing I would like to, I'm going to hit is the Fighting Crows, and it's going to play on top of the Excited Crows. So I'm wanting the crows to think that there's something going on right here, the crows are excited, and all of a sudden a fight breaks loose. And who doesn't like to come to a fight? And this is the fighting crows on top of the excited crows. You can hear the higher pitch and the growling basically. That's the fighting. Let that go on for a little bit, probably anywhere from two to three minutes, and I'd stop it. I would turn it down a little bit to where it's barely going and then kill it like it's they're drifting off. I'll let a pause because if anything's coming in, if there's a crow, they're going to come in fast, they're going to come in hard. They're going to come in hard. And how I like to do this, I like to set up at a spot where I can hear crows off in the distance. That way I can know that I can call them in. Because I've sitting here many times and called and called and called. No crows have came in, but I never even heard a crow to begin with. And that's what I've learned through my years of crow hunting. All right, the second set of calls that I would do, if nothing came in yet, and even if it has and you got a shot off, you want to throw something different to them to either attract them or to bring them back and how I would do it I would start off with the fighting crows this time All right, so I'd let that go on for 30 to 45 seconds then I would hit the crow distress on top of the fighting crows and that's gonna make them think that there's a crow down here getting his butt whooped and they want to come watch or they want to help out they want to do something that's gonna bring them in so crow distress you can hear the ground and the wah wah that is the crow distress call go on for about another two to three minutes and I'd stop it turn it down to where it gets quiet and that's pretty quiet probably picks it up real good but then I would stop it all right and the easiest thing to do let's talk about mouth calls real quick the easiest thing to do is use an electronic caller it makes it sound like a bunch of crows are on the ground that's gonna bring them in if you want to use a mouth call easiest thing to do is to listen to crows and copy what they're saying because if you're, in, if you're in nature and you hear a crow and it talks to another crow over here, they're pretty much saying the same thing. It's ah, 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 ah. They pretty much echo each other. And then they know where they're at and they come in. I don't know what they're saying, but what I like to do is I like to echo that same pattern that the crow was talking to me with. And it's real hard to bring them in with mouth calls, though. It is a challenge, but you can do it. You know, it, it is possible. But they like to hear a bunch of crows on the ground in order to come and investigate. Now let's talk about them flying in. They usually send out, if you get a lone crow that flies in, that usually means that there's a group of crow crows out there somewhere, and they send a scout. All right. My dad always told me, don't shoot the scout. He'll fly around, he'll circle, he'll probably perch in a tree somewhere off in the distance and watch. Do not move, don't even stop calling. Let him fly away. He'll fly away. And then, majority of the time, all of a sudden you'll have this whole wave of crows that come in and they want to come investigate. If he didn't see nothing was wrong, they'll come and investigate. If he seen something was wrong, then that's the time that, you know, he, he's going to tell the other crows, hey, don't go over there, there's something fishy going on. Now, you can call in lone crows by themselves. Now, there's a fine line in the difference. Now, if you set up in an area and you hear one lone crow off in the distance, you don't hear a whole murder of crows off in the distance, you know, you hear one, you can call him in, that's okay to shoot that one. That's not a scout. He's looking for 
more crows to hang out with, all right? So you gotta be, you gotta understand what you're hearing before you call in and be able and take a shot. You can, you can shoot the scout, but you know, you want him to bring in more. If it's that lone crow that you're calling in, because he's lonely, take him out. Now, a lot of things I run into, I like to set up, you know, on the edge of fields, and that's how I've, I used to hunt crows all the time. Now, the one thing, one problem that I ran into was they would get hung up really far away and just sit and watch and either not come in or come in, either that or you just see them hightail out, all right? And that was either by, you know, maybe they didn't like where I was, I wasn't camouflaged enough, I don't know, but that's some things I ran into in the past. Now in the open field, they can see that distance. So, and even majority of the time, they want to see what's there. So they'll either circle around farther out in the shotgun range or they'll perch out so they can watch. Now, what I learned to do now, me and my buddy got some video footage of this. We set up in the woods where we have a clearing that is facing towards us or something like that where they can dive into and then come investigate the sound. Now, what that's going to do is you're well concealed in the woods and they hear them crows in the woods. So now they have to fly into the woods to, to see what's going on. So that's going to bring them into your shotgun range. And if you got a channel going straight down, they're going to follow that channel and fly through it. It's the easiest path for them to fly instead of dodging limbs and weaving in and out of trees. So they're going to follow that channel, channel either a logging road, you know, a power line cut out, anything like that. If you set up on there, you got a real good chance of bringing them into your shotgun range. Crow are very smart animals, all right? They're one of the smartest birds. They're very wary. So you need to be camouflaged. You know, I, I paint my face, I do the whole nine yards just so I can get in there so they can come in without getting spooked, all right? They're very wary, and that's why they're a great confidence booster decoy when you're coyote hunting. That's another thing. I always use when I'm coyote hunting, I put a, a couple crow decoys out as high as I can get them so that the coyotes can see them, and they're like, hey, so it, there's nothing wrong here. There's crows over there. So I like using that. They're very wary birds. So that's one thing that camouflage is a definite must when you're crow hunting. All right, guys. Now I got some footage for y'all. And it's a compilation of three or four hunting times of me going crow hunting. All right. And I put the shotgun, the mount, or the camera on my shotgun mount. And I was shooting high brass. And the recoil, a lot of times, jarred the camera and shut it off. All right. So I didn't get enough really good footage of any kill shots or any you know me dropping them out of the air but overall it's good footage you can see how i set up my my decoys how i call them in you know and on here my buddy david hellman he got he got himself a crow we got some footage of that it was diving in through the trees it was hard for me to get the camera on it but it was on it and uh it came in and he, he got him so i hope you guys enjoy this video crow hunting like i said is a great way to get out there and honing your hunting skills you know and people like me do it to keep a, a tab on the crow population so they don't get overpopulated cause disease amongst themselves disease to other animals and they don't destroy crops so that's why we hunt them during their hunting season so hope you guys liked it catch you in a bit